All right, so this is the last topic of this section, percent yield of chemical reactions. So percent yield is a concept that gives us an idea of how much product we actually obtained um, compared to how much we were supposed to make theoretically. So it gives us an idea of how well an experiment went and how well our purification process was in regards to uh, how much product we actually obtained. So percent yield is very easy to calculate, but you need two things. To find the percent yield, you need the actual yield, and you divide that by the theoretical yield, which is what we've already been finding uh, in previous topics. And because this is a percentage, you need to multiply this value here that you'll get, which will be a decimal, because the actual will always be um, uh, less than or equal to the theoretical yield. It'll never be greater. So this will be one or less. You multiply it by 100 to convert it to a percentage. Okay. So in this problem, they want us to find the percent yield of carbon dioxide. What do we need to find percent yield? You need the actual yield and you need the theoretical yield. When you look at the problem, they give us the actual yield. They say 13.7 grams of carbon dioxide is produced from the reaction. But how much CO2 were we supposed to make theoretically? We have to find that. So we find that uh, using the same uh, process that we were before uh, in our previous Alex topics dealing with stoichiometry. We're going to, we're going to have to begin with a chemical equation and ensure that it's balanced. So we have butane as our first reactant. Uh, it's a combustion reaction, so it's reacting with gaseous oxygen. Our two products of a combustion reaction of uh, organic compounds of CO2 and water vapor. Okay. Now, we, now that we have the chemical equation with the correct chemical formula, we need to balance this. And we've talked about balancing before. You should get these coefficients. Uh, after you balance this chemical equation, 2, 13, 8, and 10. And then it'd be balanced. We got uh, 26 oxygens over here. 10 plus 16 would be 26. So we start with 29.6 grams of butane and 31 0.8 grams of oxygen gas. Now we make 13.7 grams of carbon dioxide, but what we want to find is what's our theoretical yield of carbon dioxide and how does that match, uh, match up to what we actually obtained. So because we are given the starting amounts of t both reactants here, reactant A and reactant B, I need to figure out which one is my limiting reactant. So we discussed this uh, in our limiting reactant topic. We're going to follow the same process. I'm going to start with my mass of both reactants. Uh, this is butane. And I have 31.8 grams of oxygen. I'm going to convert to a mass of CO2 for both of these uh, reactants. The molar mass of butane is 58.12 grams for one mole. From the balance equation, I see that two moles of butane are consumed to produce eight moles of CO2. And then one mole of CO2 has a molar mass or has a mass of 12.011 plus 32, 44.01 grams. So this should give me grams of CO2. And let's do the same for oxygen. And I'm moving more quickly through this. We've already talked about how to do this in the previous topic. So we've got 16. Excuse me, that wouldn't be 16. That would be 32. 32 grams of O2 in one mole. 
of O2. So now that we have moles of O2, we can use the coefficients here from the balance equation. This mole ratio is a conversion factor. And that conversion factor would read 13 moles of O2 are consumed to produce 8 moles of CO2. Let's input the molar mass of CO2 as a conversion factor. 1 mole of CO2 is 44.01 grams of CO2. Now, let's do the math for both of these now that the units look good. 29.6, open parentheses, 1 over 58.12. Close, 8 over 2, close, 44.01 over 1. We get 89.66 grams of CO2. And then here we have 31.8, open parentheses, 31.8. 1 over 32, close, 8 over 13. 44.01 over 1. We get 26.91 grams of CO2. So here I can clearly see that oxygen is my limiting reactant. And so therefore, because oxygen is my limiting reactant, I will only make 26.9 grams of CO2 before the reaction stops. So this is my theoretical yield for CO2. So my percent yield, using this equation, my percent yield of carbon dioxide is going to be equal to the actual yield of CO2, which is 13.7 grams, divided by the theoretical yield, which is 26.91 grams, times 100. So 13.7 divided by uh, 26.91 is 0 0.509 multiplied by 100 or moving the decimal place to the right two times I get 50.9 percent so I obtained 50.9 percent of what I should have theoretically assuming that the reaction went all the way to completion. So the, the higher the percent yield, the better the reaction uh, proceeded, the, the more completely it reacted, and the better your technique uh, if you are purifying your product. Uh, and it may be easy or more difficult to purify your product just depending on the state of matter it's in and what it is, um, what you're purifying it out of. So in this case, our percent yield was 50.9%. We got 50.9% of what we expected to get theoretically.